So we've been trying to figure it out for the last few minutes how to get this clipped on. I guess you're getting half a face from each of us. I guess the two of us together makes one really attractive person because I'm not and a lot of people consider you. I'm off point already. Yeah. Anyways, welcome to episode two. I'm here, Samiri. What up? And then on the other side, we have Emmanuel. Howdy, what's up? So, um, last week, I kind of covered the idea of people not being able to make blank because PC culture won't allow them. And in idea, I want to talk about two films that really changed the industries that they're in. And Emmanuel's going to hear chime in. He's one of the smartest people I know. This dude knows about a little bit of everything. Nigga, I'm dumb as shit. We talk about it. <laughs> like... But basically, I talked about last week in idea, Blazing Saddles and Tropic Thunder both entirely shattered the genres that they were in and considered part of. Um, Blazing Saddles really destroyed and deconstructed what is called the wholesome western. Oh, yeah. By having a black man in the role of a traditionally white character. And it shows you the absurdity of some of the tropes that they had in these westerns. You can no longer portray this lawman or have bad guys that are in no way, shape, or form sympathetic. And westerns at the time, they really adhered to the really strict film codes. Was that Hayes Law, right? I think this is like post think, yeah, Hayes Code, that's but post, like that's post -case. because they they were saying the N word in the movie, but oh. like obviously it's post Hayes Code, but it's pre our current rating system, mm. and it aped an entire genre. Like it pointed out just how stupid some of this stuff look, mm. and you know the, the the there was a Buffalo Bill one, which if anybody knows about the actual Buffalo Bill, he was basically a serial killer. I mean, or the Wild West equivalent of one. He mm. was he was a vigilante and a murderer, I guess. Mm. And they had, like, things about him with the theme song. They were singing his name. They made him a good guy. And it's this revisionist history of the West that heavily included black people, Hispanic people, women running a lot of these brothels that you see depicted. And they whitewashed it, essentially. And Blazing Saddles did such a good job by, A, holding a lens up to that and being like, this is all ridiculous. Westerns were the biggest type of film. Like, neither one of us have lived in a world where Westerns are the biggest film. We live no. in a world that is only action films being the big thing, right? Yep. But, back then, Westerns were the biggest thing ever. Rawhide, Gunsmoke, anything with Clint Eastwood yeah, in it. Yeah, that's Sergio... Damn, I pronounced his name correctly. Uh, Leon? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. Spaghetti Correct. Westerns. Uh, I think it's The Great Silence is one. Yeah. Um, it's like a shit ton of westerns, actually. And at the time when um, Blazing Saddles came out, I think there was only one of the Eastwood films with the man with no name in it. Yeah. And it's the worst one out of all of them, keep this in mind. And what Blazing Saddles did by destroying those tropes actually created a lane for the grittier westerns that we would get to know as spaghetti westerns. Yeah. And I think Tropic Thunder did the same exact thing. I think that's kind of a habit in all media is like once something becomes established we start deconstructing the idea of that medium i mean for example i mean we have watchmen which deconstructed the superhero genre but then again it wasn't before it kind of like blew up at that point because superheroes were starting to blow up around 2009-ish i think 2009-ish like was it like when 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 like uh they start making Marvel movies and whatnot. I think Iron Man was like the first one that like shattered that the one, box office yeah. and was actually a good movie. Where I like the X Men movies, but I'm never gonna say that they're good. They weren't because like when typically when people thought about superhero movies, it's like things usually were the exception and not the rule, right? Because in a sense, like oh, Spider Man, the the Raimi series, even those are trash. Um, they're nigga, the, the movies are trash. I mean, it's in a good way, but they they trash. No, I, I get what you're yeah, saying. So like, Bone saw it. Yeah. Okay, so like, it's just it's campy. It's it's enjoyable, but yeah, it's, it's incredibly campy. campy. I get what you're saying. So like, but before then, it was like always an exception because like, even though you had like stuff like Blade, you also had uh, what was that one? What was the super one? the Steel? Oh yeah, yes. with Shaq. Yeah, Steel with Shaq. You had um, yeah, I remember that. The one. original, the the both of the original Fantastic Four movies, but even the one before that, I think it had David Hasselhoff in it. I don't know. Was no, there... David, no, David Hasselhoff might have been uh, Nick Fury. That one Nick, that old Nick Fury flick. Okay. Um. Then around that same time, they had like an old Camp Captain America flick. Yeah. No, there was a ton of Captain America America serials. Like yeah. even back to when the comic was first made of him punching Nazis, and instead of the punch coming into bow yeah. or bang. But um, to say that Blazing Saddles is only funny 
because the movie is racist or because the sheriff is black, totally foregoes the ideas that Mel Brooks really laid out. There was tons of fourth wall breaks. I don't know yeah. if you've ever seen the movie, but the movie ends with them fighting with some people on a set. Like, nice. the yeah. people from the Western scene end up fighting with some people in another movie. It's absolutely funny. A spoiler alert on an almost 60-year-old movie, but, Damn. you know, nonetheless. Five minutes, done. Yeah, I know, right? Shit. Dang, you hate to see it. You hate to see it. Um, but um, I came to this idea because I was watching... I watched two videos, actually. The first one I cannot remember, but I will link to you guys some way, shape, or form. And the second one was Joe Rogan talking to Robert Downey Jr., and they were talking about how Tropic Thunder couldn't be made today because Robert Downey Jr. played a character in blackface. And the thing about this is, is that if you've ever watched the movie, the character is in blackface playing a black character, not in the sense of like it's a shucking and jiving Jim Crow thing. No. He got a pigmentation surgery because he was an extreme method actor. And they were making fun of these old school like method actor types. Oh, yeah. And to say that, oh, this movie would get canceled because there's a white man playing a black man totally foregoes some of the best jokes in the movie. Like, one of the jokes that everyone knows is that whole scene where uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s character says something about you people. And Ben Stiller goes, what do you mean by you people? He goes, no, what do you mean by you people? And, like, it, it, it totally foregoes them holding the mirror up to that. And what a lot of people don't get is that action movies up to before that point were corny. Yeah. It was corny comedy. They had one liners, Hasta la vista, baby. And like I think that's also kind of why we had um I'm gonna get you sucker. We had yes. Black, Black Dynamite is in that sense of like kind of a celebration but also kind of a, a, parody. a lampooning, a yeah lampooning, exactly. A parody. And so and also another thing I, I kind of thought about while you're talking about um people considering like Blazing Saddle and stuff wouldn't be made today. I think that kind of also goes back to that Watchmen example in which people kind of take these films and takes these stories and they kind of like they think like what it is is like oh it's this gritty superhero story in which oh the superhero died and oh uh, what's it called the Superman stand and this is a bad guy and I think they it's like it's a deconstruction it's like we're it's more of an examination and they're so, missing the forest for the trees yeah then. and so it's like also an issue they had with the recent series in which you're talking about it's too political when the original comic was highly super political like Rorschach was a racist. Rorschach was a racist. You he was scared of everything. Um, what was that? Next, so, it's the the whole story. The, the it's a cold war. Yeah. Um, but nah. One of my friends and I were talking about it about how um Rorschach is basically H.P. Lovecraft. Mm. He's scared of everything and everybody. And you know they actually held up a really good lens to Rorschach and, with Looking Glass because he's a good modern day counterpart. That is, he was a, he was a really good uh, modern day counterpart. And um. Dang, we really did, uh, what you call it, diverted on that one. But, in the aftermath of Tropic Thunder, people could not make action movies the same. Every action movie has comedy elements but, in it now. And that's the same thing with, with Blazing Saddle. And exactly. Which, which things, uh, is that when Unforgiven start coming out? Unforgiven and all these movies that these, come out these, after Yeah, the these movie. sort of deconstruction types. Unforgiven, Fistful of Dollars, The Good, Bad, and The Ugly. Or, yeah, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And all of these movies come out after the fact, and they are these realer and more raw Western films that can't be made fun of due to their campy nature. And in the sense of these action films, it created a whole boom. The Fast movies suddenly wanted to include uh, funny on top of their drama. Yeah. The MCU took off after comedy elements became a thing. Yeah. Some of the best MCU movies are after this area of this false seriousness. Yeah. Like, it... And you can see this because if you watch Iron Man 1 and then you watch Iron Man 2 or 3, you see this extreme diversion from just a big budget action film to movies that tell stories and there's comedy and there's a different gravitas to them. Some people argue they've gotten worse, but, you know, that's missing the forest for the trees to reuse another term that's yeah. been used. This movie reshaped the whole genre and they think it would be canceled for a joke that was written in to make fun of a larger problem within the I industry. I mean, people, we still <laughs> laugh at stuff that's like, I guess, not really to say politically correct or not, it's just we, we still laugh at the same sort of material. I think it's mainly the way you frame it to your audience. Exactly. We, it's like, um, for example, like we have, we have the film out right now. I think it's already, is this one theaters? Jojo Rabbit? Oh, yes. Like, we have a, we have a movie about like Hitler and everything. It's like, it's crazy. <laughs> 
But the thing about it is, is that Taika Waititi, in his writing, there's a greater purpose for Jojo Rabbit. And that's the thing. It's like that's a, that's like all of these stories, even Blazing Saddle, yes. has that purpose towards it. It's not just cringe comedy. It's not just this is funny. The joke is not the sheriff is black. The joke is not Robert Downey Jr. is a white guy playing and that's a an, black And that's also an issue people have with Boondocks in a sense. And like people feel like, oh, the joke is that, oh, nigga, that's gay. The joke is the fact that it's so we're so worried about the fact that nigga, that's gay is a thing. And, you know, another thing that I think we don't get is that the people who think that we are going to war with what was okay for them to say and find funny when they were younger. I don't think they ever actually got the jokes. No. Like, um, they were talking about how Richard Pryor named the album Nigga You Crazy, and white people were just like in utter shock and awe that they couldn't say the name of the album, but it was their favorite comedy album. Well, he named it that so y'all couldn't say the title no. of it. Because then you come to the thing where you're like, oh, man, what you laughing at? Uh, the new Richard Pryor album. And it, like, opens up this whole... I think these things are hard because it holds up a mirror to a lot of people and it lets them know how antiquated they are on yeah. some of this stuff. And change is hard. I think, yeah, that's the thing with a lot of those stories is that people usually lose that. Yeah. Because, like, like, going back to the Watchmen example, we have this dark age of comics in which a lot of these stories were a lot more grittier and a lot more, what's his name? Uh, Robert Li- Liefeld. I think that's when it was. Rob name. Liefeld, yeah. Yeah, Liefeld. Shit, I Liefeld, Alan Moore, Danny Way. Yeah. A lot of those guys, they were making darker comics, but it was. <sighs> after 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 The Dark Knight Rises, it's like, it's 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 this huge, you have, you have Watchmen, The Dark Knight Rises, you have these other stories, and like you have Spawn coming out. It's like you have this this switch to grittier stories without understanding why people were deconstructing comics. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing with a lot of the MCU films. So I think people have that same issue in which you have these movies that kind of try to deconstruct themselves in this sort of like witty way, which kind of is this sort of lazy, I guess lazy writing in a sense. Yeah. Rather, rather than exploring these topics, it's just that you just point at them. You just point at the mistakes you have in the film. And I feel like that's the same with a lot of media is in which we kind of miss the reason why we... These stories were even told in the first place. Yeah, I guess. So I, I think, think that's, that's a good place to wrap it, actually. Hey. All right, Emmanuel, I appreciate you for coming on. Hey. I will see y'all next weekend. I don't know what I'm talking about. Be good people. Peace.